Hey, what's happening, guys? I've been playing some more with this um, ESP32, the Wemos Lowland, with the onboard uh, OLED display screen. And, you know, we order these things from China, and what you get is a usually working module and no documentation whatsoever. But, you know, for the most part, it follows along the lines of the standard ESP32. But there are some interesting things that they don't tell you, especially like, well, how is that OLED wired in? Is it I2C? Is it SPI? What sort of drivers do you need? So I thought we'd take a few minutes today and go over that. Now you can see here that I am running a uh, clock on here. It does a digital clock, then it does an analog clock. And this is just an example program from the ESP8266 ESP32 SSD1306 OLED library. That's a hell of a long name for a library, but it works great. You just need to know a couple of things to make it work with this particular module. So let's zoom out. Look at that, I hit the right button this time. And we'll bring in this paper here, which has all of the goodies on it so that we can talk about it and figure it out. So the first thing we need to know is how is that module wired? And it is wired I squared C. The uh, clock is on GPIO 5 and data is on GPIO 4. Now, there are other modules that might be wired different. They might be wired as SPI. If you find one that's wired SPI, then your pinout here is clock is 5, MOSI is 7, reset is 0, data command is 8, and chip select. I'm sorry, data command is 2, and chip select is 8. Now, some other interesting features on this module are the SVP and SVN which is a, a very low powered amplifier which can be used for like a thermocouple. You also see that we have the touch pins over here and they go from GPIO 4 down to GPIO 15 here. And then we also have our serial ports here we have a couple of 3.3 volts, a couple of 5 volts, a couple of 3 grounds. And we also have some direct access to the flash memory over here. So this is going to turn out to be a really nice and useful module. Let's uh, go over to the computer and we'll take a look at that particular library. Okay, if we take a look in our library manager and just search SSD1306, we're going to come up with this one here. It is the ESP8266 and ESP32 OLED driver for SSD1306 display by Daniel Eichhorn and Fabrice Weinberg. I have version 3.2.7 installed. And if we go into that folder, let's see, uh, let me get out of this one here and we'll open up a new one file. Examples, ESP driver. And this is the one we're running here. It's the clock demo. And if you come down here, you see it, it tells you pretty much everything you need to be doing. But you need to pay attention here. You see it's setting um, your your data and your clock at D3 and D5. You need to make sure you change that, like I did right here in this line, to 5, 4. Those are the correct settings that will get you running. Also, this is the address, the hex address, uh, OX3C. Once you've got that going, it's you know, just like using any other library, you can just take a look in the uh, .h folder and see what the commands are and use them. 
So if we come down here again and we look in that library, you can see it has some other things. This is the clock demo. Uh, we have a drawing demo, OTA, simple, and a UI demo. So there's lots of interesting stuff you can do with this library. And it's made specifically for the ESP8266 and the ESP32. So there's really no trouble in making it work. You just have to make sure you adjust this line here for your I squared C. Now, if you find that it's not coming up when you do this, it's probably the address is different. And if that's the case, simply run the I squared C scanner program and you'll find out what address it's on. No problems there at all. So hopefully this helps you guys out so that you can access this OLED screen if you bought one of these modules. And keep in mind, you know, this is a standard ESP32, so it has all of the advantages of the 32, including the touch sensors, um, sleep, uh, internal temperature, dual processors, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it's all there. This is just simply giving you an OLED on board, so you don't have any additional wiring. It makes for nice, compact products, or projects, whichever way you like it. <laughs> Hope this helped you out. If it did, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. I'll put a link to that library down below and a link to this module. That's it. I'm out. Peace.